Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Today I'm going to show you how to, to put together our uh, super awesome voice changer kit. We're going to assemble this piece by piece, but first of all, let's talk about the components that uh, come with this set. Uh, i got a customized PCB, 8-pin dip socket, 16-pin dip socket, uh, uh, RTS-0072B voice changer IC, LM386 operational amplifier, two stereo connectors, a two pin um, terminal block, two two pin headers, three three pin headers, two five pin headers, um, two one n four zero zero one diodes, a forty seven picofarad ceramic capacitor, a ten picofarad ceramic capacitor, four zero point one microfarad ceramic capacitors, four two pin uh, jumpers, a uh, we've got a bunch of resistors here. We've got a two point seven K ohm resistor, a 15 K ohm resistor, a 20 K ohm resistor, a uh, 470 ohm resistor, uh, two 50 ohm resistors, and one 10 ohm resistor. Uh, we'll get to the resistors first, actually, when we solder to the board. We've got a 4.3 volt Zener diode rated for one watt, uh, an elect uh, electric con condenser microphone, five millimeter power jack. Two 100 ohm variable resistors, a single 10 k ohm variable resistor, two 33 um, nanofarad ceramic capacitors, and lastly four 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors. <sighs> okay, so first of all, let's solder in all of our resistors. So there are seven resistors in total, and please follow along with me. Um, just to the left here, there is a resistor slot labeled 470R for 470 ohm. And uh, just above it here, there's two resistor slots. One's labeled 50R for 50 ohm. And just above it, one that's labeled 10R for 10 ohm. And if we look uh, just to the right, there's a little resistor slot right here labeled RX. And you want to solder your 20K ohm resistor in this slot. Just down here, there is a resistor slot labeled 15K, so place your 15K ohm resistor in this slot. Uh, there's a little area over here with our remaining two resistor slots labeled 2.7K, so solder your 2.7K ohm resistor in this slot. And ju lastly, just to the right of that, there's another slot labeled 50R. So 50R, that's where you want to solder your second 50K ohm or 50 ohm resistor. Now, if you don't know resistor color code, that's fine. If you use a multimeter, you can read each of these uh, values. Um, you'll notice that the 50 ohm resistors should actually read 51 ohms. That's expected. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, but yeah, resistors don't have a polarity. You can solder them in either way. Both leads are the same size. Just make sure you get the right resistors in the right slots. Now, next what we're going to do is we're going to solder in all of our capacitors. First of all, don't be intimidated by the capacitors. Um, they're very easy. Just pay close attention to detail here. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to segregate your uh, capacitors. All of the 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors are slightly larger than the other two ceramic capacitors and they're labeled 104. There should be five of them. So just put them aside. Your 33 nanofarad capacitors, they look different than all of the other capacitors and they are labeled 333. Your uh, 10 picofarad ceramic capacitors labeled 10. It just has a little 10 on it. You're gonna need, you might need a magnifying glass, but it, surely enough it does say 10 on it. And your 47 uh, picofarad capacitor has a 47 on it. And that's actually going to be our first uh, capacitor. We're gonna place that in the 50p slot. I couldn't find 50 picofarad capacitors, but uh, the, the difference in 47 to 50 picos uh, so, so minute it makes no difference on the circuit. Uh, but before we get to that, again, let's talk about the electrolytic capacitors. The electrolytic capacitors, they're all the same. They uh, read 100U, 16V, so 16 volt, 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors. And what you'll notice is that each lead, each capacitor has a long lead and a short lead. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. Don't forget that. We'll be soldering those in last. So your 47 picofarad capacitor goes in the C8 slot. You'll notice that both leads are the same size, there's no polarity, so just solder it in the C8 slot labeled C850P. It goes in easily, solders easily, just make sure there's no shorts. Your 10 picofarad capacitor goes right here, it's labeled C7 for capacitor 7, uh, 10P. 
Now, your five 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors, they go in the C4 slot, the uh, C13 slot, C12, C14, and C6, and they are all labeled uh, the relative capacitor numbers and 0.1 U for 0.1 micro. Your two um, uh, ceramic 33 nanofarad capacitors are labeled 333, and they go in the C10 slot and the C9 slot, and they're both labeled 33N for 33 nano. Lastly, your four 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, they go in the C3 slot, C11 slot, C5 slot, and C15 slot, and they are all labeled 100U. Now, here's the tricky part. What you're going to want to do is each of these for the footprints for all of these electrolytic capacitors, they're circular, and there's a little plus sign on one side. In the case of C3, there's a little plus sign above the left hole. In the case of C11, there's also a plus sign above the left hole. In the case of C5, there's a plus sign below the right hole. And in the case of C15, there is a plus sign above the bottom hole. You want to make sure that your long lead goes into the hole with the plus sign on it because that's the positive lead. If you turn those capacitors around and you plug in power, you're feeding, you're, you're feeding uh, a positive signal to the negative lead and that can blow these things up. So again, if I'm going to solder, if I'm going to solder in one of my electrolytics here in C3, I'm going to make sure that my long lead goes in the left hole just which which has the positive symbol right above it and then my short pin will go in the right hole don't mix those up be very careful and if you need to use a magnifying glass but one last time just for the sake of being completely thorough the the long lead goes in the left hole of C3 the left hole of C11 the right hole of C5 and the bottom hole of C15 so solder those all into place and next we will do our diodes Diodes are easy. Two black diodes and one zener diode, which is actually looks like it's made of glass. Now you might not be able to see it from here, but the two one and four zero zero one diodes have a white stripe at one side, and then the other side is completely black. These two components are going to go into the D one slot and the D three slot. Now you're going to want to make sure that from a bird's eye view that the stripe is facing the stripe on each of these footprints. If you reverse these diodes, power will not, uh, power will not reach the rest of the board when you power up. So make sure that from a bird's eye view, one of the 1N4001 black diodes uh, has the stripe facing the left pin of D1 and the top pin of D3. It's that simple. Now the Zener diode goes in the D2 slot right here. Now what you're going to want to do is pick it up, pinch it, not hard, just pinch it with your fingers, and bend the leads like that. Now when you place it in the board, you'll notice also on the, I'm hoping you can see it, on one side of the Zener diode there's a black stripe and on the rest it's, it's, it's more of an orange color. So the black stripe is uh, what we're actually going to be placing in the left pin of, uh, of D2 and the orange side will go on the right pin. So I'm going to take the board off for a second, hoping that I don't I know that you're not going to be able to see exactly what's going on here, but I'm going to put, put the, the the diode in, and you're not going to—it's not going to go flush to the board. It's not going to go flush to the board, and that is completely a-ok. -okay. You can have it so that it's, uh, you know, even a couple millimeters above the board, like so. Now, if you can see, the black stripe's facing left orange side is facing right. So solder all of those diodes into place and next we will do our uh, dip sockets and our variable resistors. Okay, another easy step. Let's talk about the sockets first. What you'll notice on the board are the two socket footprints. And you, what you'll also notice is that there's a little notch in the footprint right here on both of the uh, socket footprints. On the sockets themselves, you'll see a little notch on the left-hand side. Make sure that you just line them up with the notches facing left from this perspective, pop them in the board, 
And that notch is going to be used for a reference point when we put our, uh, our, our chips into the sockets. So what you do is you just hold it down. What I like to do is hold it down with one, uh, each socket down with one finger, solder one of the leads on each side, and then I can turn the board around and just soldering it, solder all the rest of the leads in without, uh, without risking it falling out. And you do that for both of the chips. Now you want to make, or both of the sockets, you want to make, excuse me, you want to make sure that, uh, they're flush to the board and that when you solder all the points in, that, uh, that there are no shorts. And that's very, very, very important. So once you've done that, we've got three variable resistors. And they go into these three slots right here right here, right here. They're labeled FRQ for frequency, INVOL for in input volume, and VOL right here. Now they all have their own indicators as to what value variable resistor is placed into that slot. FR, the FRQ variable resistor is labeled 10K and we're, we only have one 10K ohm variable resistor. Now when you get your variable resistors, look at the top. It will either say 101, which is 100 ohm, or 103 which is 10k ohm. So the resistor that says 103 place it into the place it into the FRQ slot. It'll take some uh, you'll have to make sure that the leads will all line up. I'm not going to do it here I'll, uh, but just it only fits in one way and make sure that your other two 10k ohm resistors, your 101 variable resistors go in these two slots right here. So solder those all into place uh, and you'll see it in the video in just a second of how it's supposed to look. Next we're going to do all of our headers. Okay, so this can be really, really easy or tricky. I'm going to show you some, uh, some ways to make this easier for you. You've got two two-pin headers, and that well, the first one goes in the M plus, M minus slot right here, and the second one goes into the SPK slot right here. What I like to do is place the header in from the top, like that, and I'll use my, my nail to hold it down in place, I turn the board around and I dab a little so bit of solder on each of the two uh, pads. Once they're both, uh, once the solder's cooled, then I turn the board around and I uh, properly re-solder each of the leads so that it doesn't fall out. Because dabbing a little solder onto the pins will hold it into place, but it won't be a good solder joint. You want to make sure that once it's cooled and you know it's not going to fall out, you turn the board around and you re-solder each of the leads so that you get good solder joints. So do that for both of those two two pin headers. Same goes for the three three pin headers, which go in the mic slash SBK slot, the on slash X slot right here, and the EX slash SP slot right here. Solder those into place. Now here's a neat trick for the last, the two five pin headers. And I'm just gonna do this actually right in front of you. What I'll do is I'll place them both in from the top of the board. And I'll take one, you can do. You can actually use more than one if you'd like, but one is all that's necessary. One of the two pin jumpers. And I'll short the middle two pins. And basically all I need to do now is hold it down with one, with one finger and solder one pin on each side. And then it will be held into place. And then I can turn the board around and solder the rest of the pins and reflow uh, the two solder joints from the beginning. So that makes it look nice and neat. So solder those all into place. Uh, and next we will be doing our terminal block, our 5mm five, five jack, and our microphone. So the terminal block and the 5mm uh, jack, very easy. You'll notice on the terminal block that there is a terminal side. And if you turn it around, just plastic. So you want to make sure that the terminal side is facing outside the board toward you from this perspective. Uh, if you turn it around, you're obviously not going to be able to wire in your power, your power lines. Now, because this board has two power options, you can either use the 5mm jack or the terminal block, or both if you want to have a battery backup because there are two diodes in there that allow for a battery backup. Um, it won't matter too much, but you want to make sure that you want to make sure that your two terminals are facing outside the board. I have in the past, once in a while, once in a blue moon, you can be careless and solder it in the wrong way, and it makes it, it's not a fun component to desolder and bring out of the board. So what I like to do is hold it down with one finger, dab a solder, sorry, right there, 
Wait until it cools, make sure it's still flush to the board, hunky dory, turn it around, solder this pin, wait for it to cool, sorry, solder this pin, wait for it to cool, then re-solder this pin. You do it however you'd like, but it's a very easy component to solder into place. The five millimeter jack only fits in one way. Hold it down with one finger, big dab of solder here, make sure it's all good. Then solder the other two pins, make sure there's a healthy amount of solder, but don't hold the, uh, the soldering iron in place for too long because you'll melt the plastic. Be very careful, but make sure that it might even take you a few rounds. Just add a little bit of solder here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here, until all the gaps are filled. You don't even have to fill all the gaps as long as the actual leads from the five millimeter jack are touching the pads on the board. But to make it look nice, you can make it so all of the gaps are filled. Um, but yeah, never keep your soldering iron on it for too long or else you'll melt the plastic and therefore the integrity of the component. So, back to the board. Now, arguably the most challenging component, I'm going to be soldering in a different microphone after this step in the video because I need to keep this microphone for kidding. But, so just so you're, you're warned, you'll see on the footprint, uh, the little microphone area here, there's a plus sign above the, the top hole. Now, on the bottom of the board, it's not as easy as just popping it in. Many diff this, this was designed for many different microphones. These are the ones that I'm using for this specific uh, kit. Um, you'll notice very. You'll, you'll look. You'll have to look very closely at the microphone itself. But you'll notice the one side has three traces branching out to the side of the component. That's your negative side. So this lead right here, that's branching out to the shell of the microphone is your negative and the other pin is your positive. So as you can see when I'm connecting my positive to the top of the board it doesn't fit in properly. What I have to do, I'm hoping you can see this, is pop it in just a little bit, make sure both holes are in place and then bring it back, bend the leads back ever so slightly and into place. So there's a little bit of spring on it. Then I just turn it around hold the microphone into place, and I solder the two pins. So I'm going to solder all three of those components in, and then we're going to solder in our the last uh, two components, the stereo connectors, and then we're going to place our chips into the sockets. These stereo connectors are very easy. They've got four pins in the back and one in the front. And what you'll notice is on the two stereo connector footprints, uh, there's one in the front and four in the back. So what you have to do is just carefully, and I mean carefully, I'm going to take this off the screen for just one second, I'm going to line up all the pins to the holes and it should sit nicely on the board like that. You might have to bend the leads a little bit just to line everything up. And just to test, test to ensure that you haven't bent any of the leads, just take a flathead screwdriver and make sure that each of the four holes, each of the five holes, actually has the lead protruding through it. In this case, yes. So solder all five holes, make sure it's still flush to the board, and do the same for the stereo connector. The last step. We're going to place our socket, our chips into our sockets. Now this is something that you have to, this is going to take some finesse. You're going to need patience here, especially if you're not experienced in placing uh, dip ICs into dip sockets. Uh, what you'll notice is on both of the chips, there's a notch on the left-hand side. Remember when we placed our sockets in, we placed it so there would be the indicator of the notch on the left-hand side. So what we're going to want to do is, from a bird's eye view, make sure that the notch on the RTS-0072B is facing the left. Now, how I like to do this is I like to gently place the bottom row into the socket with leading the top row out of the socket. And then I like to just make sure that that's that all the leads are actually in the bottom. Then I like to gently bend the leads in the top down and you can actually feel it go into place. Once you're sure that all, all uh, 16 leads are in, you can give it a little push and it will go directly into the board. Same goes for the uh, LM386. Now I'm reaching around the camera right here, sorry if I'm blocking the view. Bottom first, gently massage the top pins in and pop. Perfect. So now, take one of your jumpers. We've already got one of our jumpers on our mode, select, our mode selection header right here. Let's select microphone. And if you haven't already watched the, uh, the, the video manual, watch the video manual. That'll be, it'll make a bit more sense. We'll, we'll select on. So by selecting 
uh, mic and on, we're selecting our onboard microphone. Now keep in mind that your microphone looks different than this microphone. And lastly, take your last of the four two-pin headers and connect uh, external. And that's up to you. You can select whatever you want. Just keep those jumpers on the board so that you don't lose them. Now, to test, watch the video manual and uh, there you go. There you have it. Thanks for watching. That's what your end product should look like. It wasn't that difficult, was it? Thanks for your support with the Kickstarter campaign. It went really well and I'm packing up all the rewards right now. Take care, everyone.